to be good at obstacle course racing, you need to be fast and you need to be strong. But there is a balance when putting together a training plan to make sure that you're making the most out of your time. In this video, I'm gonna teach you exactly how I put together strength training programs for the athletes that I coach and for myself. And stick around to the end of the video where I'll give you an opportunity to get some free workouts that are gonna make you a better, stronger, faster obstacle course race athlete for free. So before we get into it, hit subscribe so you can get all the newest videos, hit the little bell next to it so you can get alerted when new ones come up so you can become a better, stronger, faster athlete. Okay, let's get into it. So before we really start in general when talking about strength training, we wanna set the priorities here and the priorities around what is gonna make you the best obstacle course racer. You've probably heard, and if you've ever done a Spartan race before, you know there's running. So, but right off the jump, I need to clarify that strength training is only gonna get you so far when it comes to your results. You really need to train for endurance and to be a better runner to get the best results possible. Strength training will make you a better obstacle course racer, but it won't get you the best results possible. So now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about the actual strength that you're gonna need. We're gonna talk about three different topics in this video. We're gonna talk about grip strength, we're gonna talk about specific versus general strength, and we're gonna talk about strength under fatigue. So as we get into the grip strength of things, you know to get through these obstacles that the strength in your hands and the endurance in your forearms can be the limiting factor and can really make or break your race. If you miss an obstacle, it's going to be much harder to get the results that you want. So grip training and grip strength are an obvious place to start. So when we train for these obstacles, we want to be as specific as possible, but it's not always realistic that you're going to be able to have a real life twister or a multi-rig or anything else that you might encounter at something like a Savage Race or an Obstacle Course Race World Championships at your disposal. So what we wanna do first is to improve your overall grip power. When you improve your, rel your absolute power as uh, in your, fingers and your forearms, it will make the obstacles feel easier. It's like the equivalent of doing fast sprint work or doing heavy deadlifts to make you as strong as possible or as fast as possible. It'll give you a reserve of strength in your hands and your forearms so that when you grab an obstacle, it's going to feel light, it's going to feel easy. For the most part in obstacle course racing, there's not a really long extended piece where you're gonna need extreme grip endurance like climbing up a crag or doing top rope climbing where you're gonna get really pumped and really fatigued within your forearms and fingers. For the most part, they're power output. You need to grab and go as fast as possible. These obstacles really don't last that long. And there's only a handful of races where it's gonna be back to back to back grip obstacles. Plus you have as much time as you want to recover. Uh, ideally, you want to go as fast as you can through all of them. But training your absolute grip strength is really where you're gonna make or break on this. So for this, there's gonna be two different types of grip training that I recommend and I put into the strength training programs. One is called max hangs and one is called repeaters. So max hangs essentially is gonna work on your absolute strength. So what this looks like is doing three to five sets of 10 second dead hangs under tension. So what that means, you're gonna load up like a weighted dead hang. So what this looks like in practice for the max hang protocol when you're working absolute grip strength is you're gonna wanna find a weight to affix to yourself either with a weight belt, weight vest, or sticking like a dumbbell between your legs and then hanging on to a bar, a ledge, or say like towels or a rope, whichever type of grip strength you want to work on and then hanging for 10 seconds. So this 10 seconds, it should be at about 90% of your max effort, something that you could probably hold for 14 or 15 seconds total if it was an all out effort. And then stopping at 10 seconds and resting for three to five minutes. So this should be a pretty intense, hard effort, just like if you were to do a really heavy set of deadlifts or a really heavy set of like two back squats. That way you can work on your maximum power in your fingers and forearms. And that will really help your ability to feel these obstacles being like easy. Improving your absolute strength in your hands is going to be a really strong way to kind of start. So I would have that protocol for about four to eight weeks and then switching into something that's gonna be more power endurance based. And these are called repeaters. And what repeaters are is going to be doing a much lower weight and holding for seven seconds and then releasing for three and then holding for seven seconds and then releasing for three. So you can see the rest is much lower and the amount of volume that you're gonna amass is much higher. So you should do that about six reps. So it should be 
a minute of work and then resting for two to three minutes so that you're able to uh, recover and do a little bit more volume. So that's how you're going to be able to move in between your alt your power output for your grip strength and your endurance for your grip strength. And a study that was conducted by one of the top researchers in rock climbing, her name is Eva Lopez, did a study where she found that uh, participants who were already trained in, in grip training in, in rock climbing found a significant improvement in both their endurance and their strength over an eight week protocol doing both the repeaters and the uh, max strength protocol. So grip training is just one part of your overall strength training. If there needs to be a place to start and there needs to be one thing that you can do and if missing obstacles is something that is hurting your, all, your overall performance, then this is a great place to start. But then there's an element of having general strength and specific strength. For obstacle course racing, you're gonna need a little bit of both. And having these layered in your program uh, and cycled in and out are gonna be a really helpful way to build that strength and make sure you are ready for whatever obstacles come your way. So what this is gonna look like is going to be very much single leg strength for climbing and for odd object training when it comes to uh, moving through some of the obstacles like a a carry or a an atlas stone or anything that's going to really be a, a lot of power that you're gonna to need to generate in one shot. So the best way to kind of cycle through this is to use your compound lifts and doing things like lunges, squats, deadlifts, and then changing it into more specific training where it's gonna be more race specific. And that was, that is gonna look like sandbag carries. It's gonna look like sandbag deadlifts. It's going to look like farmer's walks. Things that are gonna be very much specific in that realm. Uh, there's studies have shown that training specific for strongman and training with your general compound lifts for like powerlifting, you can get pretty close to as strong in both, but the, speci the specificity of the race itself is going to lend itself more toward that strongman training. But laying the foundation down in your power lifts is gonna be really helpful to get you to that point where the strongman objects don't feel as heavy and then you're just gonna need to kind of learn that skill. So cycling in and out between your general strength and your, your specific strength will be really important um, when it comes to single leg things, your compound movements, moving things up and overhead. And that way it will give you a good base of strength so that whatever comes toward you in the race, you can be ready for. And once you have that general strength down, that base of strength, you can also start to layer in that strength and the fatigue. Because the relative strength that you need for an obstacle course race, it's pretty low. You don't need to be able to deadlift 400 pounds. There's never gonna be an obstacle out there that is going to be a limiter on your absolute strength once you reach a certain point. So it's gonna be important that you're able to call on that strength while you're under fatigue. And that is gonna look very much in the vein of like CrossFit or like a Metcon or a functional fitness where you're moving through and transitioning through your strength movements in a fast, quick manner and really focusing on the breathing patterns. And that's something that is huge when it comes to this metabolic conditioning type of training is the breathing patterns and focusing on slowing things down and being under load and moving under load. And that's something that you can practice so that when you get out onto the race course, you're able to take on whatever thing comes your way. Over the years, CrossFit and the functional fitness training have kind of gotten a bad rap because it's so general that you're not really gonna be able to work on anything specific. It's not great for building muscle. It's really not great for uh, burning fat. It's not a really specific to anything. And for a CrossFit athlete, they need to be generalized and to be good at everything. And we're very similar as obstacle course race athletes. We need to know how to do pretty much everything. So we need to practice how to do everything, which makes the, the scope of training really big and really broad. And practicing that can really can, can be a bit overwhelming. So what I wanna do is kinda go through what a general workout is gonna look like for a strength training uh, athlete and for a strength training program that we have. So as we go through, the first part is gonna be your general warm up, and this is gonna be a heavy grip day. So warming up your grip is gonna be important. As we start, this should be about 10 minutes of going through each one of these movements um, where you're gonna be doing some specific dynamic motion, working on your forearms, working on your fingertips, doing some things like fingertip planks, working on stability with bird dogs, opening up that breathing, those breathing muscles and your diaphragm, and then getting into some forearm stretches, palms up stretches, and then just kind of getting your body warm by going through a couple rounds of jumping squats and air squats. 
So let me get into some max hangs, which is what we talked about at the top of the video, which is gonna be three to five sets, 10 seconds active hang, three to four seconds, uh, three to four minutes of recovery in between. So again, loading up the weight, and then in between you can work on things such as your core strength or more muscle activation with the Romanian deadlift. The RDL is gonna be fall much into that general strength uh, area and is gonna help build your posterior so that when you get up to something like a, a stone or a tire or whatever you have to kind of pick up, it'll make it that much easier. Once we get done with the max hand, we're gonna get into more general strength again. And this is gonna be doing some dumbbell reversed front uh, foot elevated lunges. So just standing up on a plate or a box, a, a shallow box, and just stepping back off of it to increase that depth. This is gonna make you a stronger climber. It's gonna give you much more, much more muscle activation through your quads and your glutes. And it's just gonna be harder. So then superset that with hollow holds, which is gonna really help brace your midline and your core and give you that course, that functional core strength in your intra-abdominal muscles so that you are able to carry things under load and can really hope, uh, help create a stable platform. And then this is what it's gonna look like for that general conditioning, that met metabolic conditioning, that, that strength under fatigue. And this one is gonna be specifically geared toward your grip. So it's a descending ladder where it's gonna be dumbbell ground to overhead. So think of like a slam ball that they have in uh, a stadium race where it's just down to the ground, up overhead, down to the ground, up overhead. It's gonna tax your fingers, gonna tax your grip, gonna t uh, tax your cardio system, and it's gonna put a lot of pressure under load onto your diaphragm and on your skeletal system in general. Then box jump overs is moving, oh, moving under fatigue and using your coordination to get back and forth over a box. And then just gonna be hanging knees to elbows. So hanging with the, uh, on a pull-up bar and then pulling that your knees up to your chest, which is going to help with thing with your grip strength and also your ability to pull your legs up to get up over things like walls. After each round of this, you're gonna do 100 meter, 100 feet of farmers walking and taxing the grip. So over time, as these reps get lower and lower, your grip is going to get more and more taxed. So this is just one day, this is just one example of what it looks like for a strength training program for obstacle course racing. But this is just one piece. This is one piece in a huge, big, long cycle of getting stronger. So if you want a better idea of how to kind of create this plan for yourself, I dropped a link down below where I can deliver two weeks of free workouts directly to your inbox. So it's gonna be about five or six workouts that you can kind of put together. Uh, as the cadence of strength training, you're gonna to want to make sure you are doing two to three sessions per week, depending on the time of season. And you wanna cycle through these different types of, of conditioning, whether that is general strength, whether there's specific strength, grips, uh, power, grip power, or grip endurance. You're gonna to wanna to cycle things in and out. So you can get a good idea of what a general week or two weeks looks like with the workouts that I'll, I'll send directly to your inbox by just clicking that link below. And here at Reinforced Running, we do offer monthly coaching for the obstacle course race athlete. It is $20 per month and it will take you through all the progressions that are necessary to help you get stronger and continue to improve. So it takes all the guesswork out of your strength training so that you can do what matters the most and you can get the results that you deserve. So check the link directly in the comments below to learn more about the strength coaching. So I hope this was helpful for you when it comes to your strength training for obstacle course racing and for your Spartan race. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button to get all the newest videos to you. And again, hit that link down below so you can get these free workouts and you can get stronger today.